I'm going to cover uh, three, three topics today. I'm going to give you a brief uh, overview of our company because it mimics the development of the software marketing industry as a general. <coughs> and I'm going to talk about the uh, software market itself, uh, where it stands today. And I will conclude if I have time. Uh, uh, putting a little bit more emphasis on the quality element of the business as uh, both Peter and uh, Nick uh, Parker yesterday mentioned the importance about that and we haven't heard as much about it uh, since then. Obviously it's getting very crowded in the clouds and uh, that's where we exist and, uh, um, and those of you who are above 40 will have no problems reading my slides because they are very uh, uh, tailored for that uh, audience. Uh, we started company in 1997. We were at the right place at the right time, right in the heart of the Silicon Valley, Mountain View, with all the happenings uh, around us when the internet uh, just got, uh, got going. And being a graduate from Carnegie Mellon and not having a, a domain expertise, it was uh, very logical to get a company going that would focus on uh, managing environmental data and uh, information. Originally, when we got going, we thought we were going to design all the treatment plants, uh, such as this one, and build them and manage them. Within a month of being in business, we realized these are really not uh, only the water treatment plants, these are the data generation plants. And there's a huge amount of data coming out of this uh, type of facilities that was largely unmanaged and used only once for reporting purposes. So we set a mission and, uh, for the company and what we believe from day one is that every company, every enterprise out there should own and have easy access to their information. When you look at uh, today's uh, market in the software, it's unbelievable that you can log in at Google and find out anything about anything in three seconds. But if you are a corporate executive and you need to find out about information about your carbon and water emissions, you need to make a phone call to your consultant and three days later, if you're lucky, and a few thousand dollar bill to find out the results. That's not acceptable. We, we set and uh, we pioneered the software of the series, so it's called cloud computing in, the, in this industry. We launched our first application in 1999 and uh, today we manage over 15,000 sites uh, or around the globe and uh, just uh, one piece of statistic, statistics to last year we had 120 million analytical chemistry data for water quality in the system. And we are growing this number about 20% uh, a year. We had a half a billion dollar log logins in the last uh, uh, four years, and we have a stellar list of Fortune 500, 500 companies as a client. Uh, to, for those of you who are in investment business, and there are quite a few here, we are profitable fast growing and we have not had any access to outside capital. We bootstrapped the company and, uh, and we brought it uh, to the level that is a major competitor without uh, any uh, outside uh, funding. Uh, this is the graph that, graph that shows the growth of our software but mimics the growth of the industry. And uh, when we launched in 1999, there were a few takers, few early adopters to companies that were uh, technology companies like Schoenberger. Alstom in Europe and Honeywell, and, uh, and then the important event was 2003 when Sarbane Soxley came into the power. And you can see exponential growth because all publicly traded companies suddenly wanted to have access to their information. And how you would have a good Chevron in uh, early adopters, but they did because they realized the liability coming out of uh, Sarbane Soxley. The second <coughs> big uh, market driver. Uh, happened in around 2008 uh, on anticipation of uh, carbon legislation in the US and uh, as we know uh, that didn't materialize but really it doesn't matter for the, for the market, uh, for the software size as you'll see it's much bigger than carbon itself. We, well, last year we have about 35% growth added all these clients and probably the current <coughs> achievement of our uh, strategy has been a work from the uh, Department of Energy and Los Alamos to manage all their environmental data over 100, mile, 100 square mile sites in a, where a US nuclear weapons program originated in the 1940s. And this, uh, this is probably the single largest award for cloud computing in the industry, and it's, it's interesting, it came from the government. So, next few minutes, uh, I'm going to talk about 
the framework for uh, environmental software and what's, uh, what's, uh, what are the key input areas. When you look at the very large scale, at 10,000 feet, what are the human needs for shelters, energy, food, and fresh water, and how they interact with the ecosystem on the planet, along the atmosphere, climate, and oceans, and terrestrial ecosystems. If you translate this to enterprise, it looks something like this, and you can all see the parallels. Every enterprise needs the facilities, materials, energy, and water. And all of these activities are regulated one way or the other uh, through various regulations that have, some of which have existed uh, for a couple of decades, like uh, Clean Air Act and Clean Water Act and so on. And uh, <coughs> for waste management, so <coughs> at intersection of each and every of these columns and rows, there is a need for software application. In the past, most of those have been handled as a silos, standalone, and not integrated. What we have set as a mission for our company is to integrate all that application in a single, uh, uh, a single piece of software that will manage not only carbon or water, but will manage all of this in a sustainable way in the enterprise on a single database on the web, so that the company can have easy access to energy, water, air, and uh, soil information at any given point of time. And that's not an easy task, but uh, it's possible to do it. And how do we do it? We started with something that we call a conceptual site model. And if you can imagine a cube built around a, a glass cube, built on a virgin piece of land, with no assets, no contamination, and you plan to develop a plant, a factory, a refinery, whatever the, it is. The first thing that you have to do, you need to know something about what's happening in the underground community or foundation of home geology, geotechnical parameters, and, uh, and water table. And once you characterize <coughs> the site, you have already lots of information that uh, in the past typically would go lost for <coughs> some period of time. Once you can characterize the site, you put in assets in terms of factories, up in uh, buildings, boilers, tanks, above ground uh, and underground. And then you start bringing the elements and the resources from outside, energy, water, natural gas, and materials that will be used to run your facility or the plant, and that could be just human resources. And once you have built and started operating, you have products going out, you have waste generated, you have surface water discharges, and, um, and uh, other discharges, and inevitably and unfortunately, many of the components on the inside the plant leak into the groundwater and then you have emissions to the air and the greenhouse gases and, and so on. And each of these arrows here presented represents one segment of that market and that's what we have uh, built our software around. I'm getting the signals here so I have to be careful. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to just cover quickly how uh, big is the market about uh, for the carbon and energy management, and uh, according to Forrester research, it's uh, over. It's going to be over one billion in 2013. When you add water and other elements, it's several times this size. And uh, there are over 100 new companies that came in the marketplace just over the last 18 months. All of them primarily focusing on the carbon emissions. This is a graph that uh, summarizes <coughs> most of those companies. This is a graph. It, this came from the. Gartner report on uh, sustainability software in October of 2010. And you can see here the players in the market, the one that is equal, it's our company. You have big guys like Oracle and SAP coming to the race. You have hundreds of startups, and you have few companies that have been around for some time. In summary, the software market is very fragmented. Uh, we see there are no clear, clear leaders as of yet, although we would love to call ourselves, but uh, I think it's way too early. It's very similar to health records management. As, uh, as we know, we still cannot name a single company as a leader in that software. And same thing will be happening on the environmental and energy side. There are too many companies chasing too few deals. There is general lack of domain expertise in the startups. They're all coming from the side of the computer science and software coming to people from Oracle and SAP. And those are the people who are not going to cross the chasm with this type of companies that require very deep domain expertise. There is a significant amount of uh, hair mentality, 
too many companies uh, floating around the carbon, which now has disappeared from the scene, and I think we'll see significant consolidation. A number of these companies are simply not uh, going to make it. Uh, just a few more uh, slides, and then I'm going to complete. Uh, there are only two to three hundred companies in the world today that have a comprehensive environmental management system that covers all the areas that I have described. And that's, that's a challenge that's because it takes a lot of energy and a lot of dedication from the management to make the decision. And I think uh, we have a very interesting industry in making. It's going to be very large, but it's going to take much longer than many of uh, people have thought it would. And uh, so with that, I would uh, complete. Thank you.